clock has been called. You now have two minutes to talk about these eight topics. At the end of 155, there'll be a five second countdown. If I say the word zero, that topic is dead. All right, calling the clock, we're gonna get started. Our first topic is Joseph Altamonte returns poker with a bang. Man, he has a girlfriend for what, nine years? Nine years. Nine years, and he takes a break from poker, which is- she didn't like it. She hated poker. She didn't want him to play poker. And he didn't play poker. He lived, you know, happy wife, happy life type of thing, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess that's a, it's a rough, that's a rough life, man. I mean, you're fortunate. Your wife lets you play poker. I, yes. I, yes, she does. I've been married <laughs> 17 years and I've been able to play uh, poker quite a bit in those 17 years. Well, this guy takes yeah. a nine year break, comes to the 2023 World Series of Poker, navigates a field of 3,200 entries and wins the $600 PLO tournament for a gold bracelet and $217,000. You got to think that girlfriend is questioning right now, like, okay, maybe that poker thing is is worthwhile. You know, I remember there's a girlfriend I had when I was a kid and uh, she wanted me to kiss her and I was just too afraid. It was, I'd never kissed a girl before. And I said, I said, no, and I, I could push her off. And then I, my next girlfriend, I did kiss and I called up the ex. <laughs> I, was, I called her up and I was like, hey, guess what I did? I kissed a girl. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wonder if this guy called her up and be like, hey, guess what? I went and played poker and I won a bracelet. You helped me back. I could, he could have had maybe 10 or 15 by now. He could have been next to, next right? to yeah. yeah, nine years. <laughs> Nine years, he comes back, he wins it first day? Come on. Yeah, that's really crazy. And you know, it's insane. I, I'm guessing, you know, he probably doesn't have to call. Just have the winner's photo. Like, they've got to run in the same circles after nine years, mutual friends and just all that. Just tag her on Instagram. Yeah. Post just, that picture, just tag her in the background. What a great story, though. Horrible. You know, the huge, huge field. I, I actually fired a bullet into this one. Uh, PLO, very popular, 3,200 entries, uh, and just a, a fun story. You know, otherwise, it's just man wins poker tournament yeah. but him sharing that detail of oh yeah i've been taking a nine-year break because of the ex-girlfriend but now she's on the curb and so i came been, back i mean it must have been heat them up like to, to to win that bracelet to know that nine years he was just waiting for this yeah i mean just so brutal it's a good so thing brutal. he didn't put a ring on it because now he's got a bracelet on his wrist that's right that's right play of the year update <laughs> newsflash chad f is our leader shocker yeah, I mean, he wins two bracelets, both of the dealer choices, and he becomes the most popular Chad in poker. Uh, you know, by far, it's been fun to. In you fact, know. we're trying to get him to come in the show and this. Is what you use. <laughs> yeah, there's no other. Well, well, they are the Jesse's too. It's Shit. funny because yeah, I'm it's trying really to get bad. Jesse Sylvia to come be. Uh, so we're just trying to replace each other. Brutal. But Brutal. but no, it, what I was kind of interested in is. Obviously, he wins two bracelets. He's got to be a huge favorite for player of the year, right? Which he still is, obviously. But looking at the after Numbers. the first week, yeah, the actual points, you uh, it's not as a runaway as I would have thought. He has, uh, in our last update, now this has changed a little bit since uh, since the article was published, but he had almost 2,000 points, 1,948. Oh, I've got, I've got the WC oh, numbers up there today. He has 2,153 right now, as of today, Friday, June 9th. Uh, right behind him is Tyler Brown, sitting with 1,739. And I mean, that's that's way closer than I thought we'd see anybody. Yeah, uh, exactly. And Tyler Brown, of course, the winner of the Mystery Millions. And I think he also had another final table appearance already. So he's he's off to a strong start as well. Yeah, you got Brian Yoon sitting third with 1293. That's how that's how big this difference is. 1293 is third, 17 and 2100 for our leader. Ike Haxton, who won last night. Yeah, I'll get it. We'll talk more about Ike in a minute. But he's sitting fourth at 1256. Um, I mean... These numbers are great. Even Joseph Altamonte, who we just talked about, he's sitting 11th with a 1,000. Yeah. I, I still think Chad uh, uh, Eve Sledge is going to be hard to catch because he's going to play everything. He's going to put in a full schedule. He's a great player, you know, reigning WPT player of the year, now the leader in the WSOP player of the year race. He's going to be hard to catch. But that said, I've been around enough WSOPs to know that early on, sometimes those players who run hot early end up cooling off and then somebody catches fire. There's been times in recent history where we thought, all right, this person's going to win player of the year. They don't end up winning it. We'll have to wait and see. Sitting 27th, Sean Deeb. Okay. All right. So let's talk about Michigan PA bracelets. Um, Chad, we just had our first online bracelets uh, awarded. Todd Estes wins his second online bracelet, which is pretty sick. I would, I got to go to his house in Michigan, of all places, with Norman Chad last year to award the very first ever bracelet given in the state of Michigan. Um, but we're both kind of thinking the same thing here. Yeah, I think a lot um, of people are thinking this. So yeah. look, it's great. It's a great accomplishment. The online markets are exciting. Yep. But when you have a tournament like this, which had 170 something players, 132. Oh, yeah, uh, well, with 46 some, yeah, with some re entry. Yeah. So 178 uh, in a, a $500 online event. Yeah. Great accomplishment. It is a bracelet, but 
it does it compare to you know the mystery millions bracelet that was just awarded or these massive fields live uh you know there is a distinction. And in fact, I've started writing when I write reports wins an online bracelet to just kind of, there's got to be a separation, I think, because there is in most players' minds. But here's the deal. When you think about the World Series of Poker past the history, I mean, this bracelet is bigger than any of the bracelets from the 70s uh, compl- uh, combined almost. Yeah. Like the 70s were years where the first main event only had, what, 11 runners? I mean, it's just, we've, we've, we've gone through those years. So yes, this is a small field bracelet, but... At the same time, it's still a World Series of Poker bracelet. It still has something behind it because, I mean. <laughs> I, but, I mean, if you go to, if somebody says, oh, I'm a World Series of Poker bracelet winner, and you go, oh, great, that's awesome. What a great accomplishment. And you, what event did you win? And they say, oh, I won the $10,000 seven-card stud championship. Awesome. That's, wow, that's great. Compared to saying, oh, I won the the Michigan event number one $500 bankroll builder. Not to take it away. I don't mean to do that, you know, but, like, there is a difference. Okay. You know, talking to Todd, he he loved it. I mean, for him, when he won it last year, it meant more than anything in his poker career. And that's I think that still has a reason to, to it. To be fair, my bracelet isn't as equal as a 7K. Yeah. So talking about the Poker of Hall of Fame nominations. Nominations are open, Chad. We talked about this quite a bit already to start the show, but uh, we, we haven't talked about who we want to get in there. And I have a, uh, I've, I've got, I'm kind of stretched, man. How are, what, what, who yeah, you know with? There are a lot of people who deserve to be in the Poker Hall of Fame, but I've said this for a long time, and I know a lot of people echo this sentiment. Until Esai Scheinberg, the founder of Poker Stars, is in there, it is incomplete, if you will. He deserves to be in there. He changed the game of poker tremendously. He's been honored by so many other uh, outlets over the course of time. He single-handedly just changed the face of poker. If it wasn't for Esai Scheinberg, there would have been no Chris Moneymaker. There would have been no poker boom. He wouldn't, you know, poker stars wouldn't have existed. Uh, Daniel Negreanu feels mm. the same way. So many other people. Esai Scheinberg needs to get in. I understand there were a lot of politics that he had, uh, you know, the Black Friday indictments and stuff, yeah. but that's all cleared up now. He's a hero in the poker world, and he needs to be uh, honored as such with the Poker Hall of Fame. Are you trying to get a job from him or something? Good Lord. <laughs> My God, here, here's your here's your pitch right here. Um, Chad, I mean, nothing against Esai, but we have we have Matt Savage, who's given so much to the game. Even, you know, just sitting here with Jack today, we're going to think about Jim Albright, how he's not in there. And right. Jim was right there next to Jack. Jack's in there. Jack Binion's in there. We have lots of builders. I think it's time for Matt Savage, or maybe to look back at Jim Albright's time and then pull him in. He's a long forgotten, like, they need to also, you know, we talked about the Poker Hall of Fame and the way they're doing things. One thing, it's hard for a builder to get in because most of the people who are voting are players and they don't necessarily, yeah. you know, equate. They want to get their peers in there. So I do, I would like to see a change where once every three years or something, an additional builder is brought into the Poker Hall of Fame. Yeah, for sure. I hope to see Norman Chad and Lon get in there. That'd be great. Yeah, I think well-deserving. Matt Savage, too. Like everybody who's nominated deserves it. Not to take away from anybody in, in that regard. It's just that some people, like, come on, we got to get them in there because their contributions are... are, are Poker News yeah. Cup is returning to the Golden Nugget. I had so much fun last year at the at the Golden Nugget hosting this great event. Um, we had a broadcast for day two and day three, um, but this year we're adding a little spice to it. This year we're making this a mystery bounty, and I am so excited because I get to help put this whole thing together. And one thing we're doing is something I haven't seen yet. I'm, I feel like I've talked about it enough where someone could reproduce this, but what we're doing is uh, when you watch mystery bounty, you know, what you see is you see people open their, their envelope, they look at it, then they, then you get to see their face as how to react. Are they sad? That means it's a min cash. Are they happy? Okay. Now how big is it this time? We're going to have every envelope open on a felt with a camera over top, just like a flop gets pulled out. Uh, you know, that's what we're going to try to see so we can sweat with each envelope. Um, I'm excited about this, but there's nothing about the Golden Nugget. Chad, you can tell them all about that. Yeah, so the Poker News Cup, $1,100 buy-in, $1 million guarantee. Remember, last year, this tournament was a big success. It ended up attracting, I think it was 1,245 entries. The prize pool was over $1.2 million. The, the biggest, largest. Yeah, yeah in the largest. Golden Nugget history, we're talking about, I think, the oldest casino in, or one of the oldest casinos in Las Vegas. So yeah. to set that record was very special. I think this year is going to be even larger, given the mystery bounty format. And and uh, that's going to take place, what is it, 
it's going to be the end of June, June 28th, I think, through July 3rd. Yep. Um, we're going to start streaming on day two. I'll be doing commentary. You're going to be doing some of the bounty draws. It'll be very exciting. The final table then on July 3rd. And if you want to play this event right now, the Golden Nugget, well, not right now, they've announced it, but June 24th through June 29th, they're going to literally give away 100 seats into this tournament. 100, 11, $100, 1100 seats for the Poker News Cup simply by playing in the cash game room at the Golden Nugget. You go, you sit down, there's going to be random drawings, and that's all you got to do. Yeah, it's great. It doesn't get much better than they that. They did this last year, and it was such a big success, and I hope to see it happen. You know, it's happening again. It's great. Yeah. It's great. All right, so the BetMGM Poker Championship over at Aria starts today. I don't know much else about it. Yeah, $3,500 buy-in. They've upped the guarantee to $2 million. This is oh, the Aria's you know, flagship summer tournament. We have a Poker News live reporting team photographer over there. And I know a lot of folks are going to go from the World Series over there to try their hand at it. Right now, it's just day 1A. And I'm looking over some of the players who are in the field. you got Farah Gathand, uh, Yuhal Halpi. You've got, uh, you know, uh, you're going to have Darren, um, Elias. Darren, uh, Darren Elias, who just final table. That was the 25K high roller. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about that. So you're going to have a lot of people that you would expect to see at the World Series going over there because it's such great value. And one of the reasons it's such great value is because BetMGM has been qualifying players from Michigan, from New Jersey, from Pennsylvania, and sending them you know, to this tournament via packages. So there's going to be a lot of qualifiers uh, and the field is just going to be a juicy mix of these recreational online qualifiers and top pros. Last year, Joey Wiseman, I've, I'm, I love Joey Wiseman. He, he won it. Uh, there were 343 entries. He's getting the $224,000 first place prize, uh, defeating Paul Heffer in heads up play. Um, I mean, it's it's exciting and it's great to have these big events around Vegas. I mean, because while the World Series offers something for everybody, it's it's just you just have to you have to be around the city. And if you go play this one, you can meet a poker celebrity because I see she's in the field right now, Robbie Jade Lou. Hey, you yeah, know, she's there playing. Go play that Jack four. You can compete against her. But uh, now this is one of those. I'm going to leave the World Series for a little bit and at least go over there and check it out because this is a, a great event. And the final table is going to be live streamed on Poker Go. And as I said, of course, we've got the Poker News live updates uh, and just looking forward to another big bet MGM poker championship. It's also part of a series. There's an 800 hour mystery bounty taking place part of that on June 8th as well. Or I guess that was yesterday. Um, but I mean, just it's a great whole series. Yeah. Definitely one to look forward to. So Ike Haxton finally, finally wins his first bracelet. Yeah, he was on our list of best without a bracelet. Without a doubt. Probably the top person there, right? And it's a, a great accomplishment on his part. This was in the 25K high roller. Takes it down for $1.7 million essentially. And secretly, like kind of... I guess this exposed it a little bit more, at least for me. He's having a tremendous year on the felt in 2023. Uh, we're about halfway through, a little over halfway through, and he's already won over $7 million, gets his first bracelet here. I mean, is this going to be the year of Ike Haxon? I mean, I hope so, because, I mean, I feel like he's gotten a lot of love the last like, few years, but there was a, just a big amount of time where I just didn't see him. And uh, I mean, I, and I've been a fan for, I mean, since it feels like the mid 2000s, uh, looking back at his WSOP records, he had a 2009 second place finish, a 2017 third place finish, 18, a fourth place finish, 2011, a seventh place, another seventh. So yeah, he came, he made lots of final tables. I mean, a, let's see, a second, third, fourth, seventh, seventh, eighth, ninth, ninth, you know, if we were going to make the unofficial final table, that's nearly 10 right there. Right. I mean, uh, it's definitely, he, sh he showed he's got skills. We know he has skills. He's won other, plenty of other events, but the WCP was always one that was just, just inches away. And uh, there we go. He this, finally, this was his sixth victory in 2023. Yeah. It brought his lifetime uh, tournament earnings up to more than 37 and a half million dollars. And Jesse, let me ask you, put a guess out there. Where do you think that ranks him now on the all time poker money list? Thirty-seven and a half million. Yeah. Oh, good lord. Uh, what's the top? Uh, I think somebody's cracked like sixty million at this point. Justin okay. Bonimo, so his say, good friend, who was in the winner's photo. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. I'll say he's in the top top fifteen. Mm, well, that's true. He is in the top fifteen. Yeah. You want to get more specific? Uh, I guess I'll say like ninth. Uh, no, you know, he was close to fourteenth now. Fourteenth. 14th. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, which wow, I was surprised. Wow, was close. I <laughs> thought thirty-seven and a half million would get him in the top ten at least, but uh, he's well on his way. All right. This is a stupid one. This is the dumbest one we're ever talking about probably in the show. A woman on the rail of a, what, I don't know what tournament it was. Was it? I think it was the 2,500 free-handed maybe or yeah. something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah just on, on the rail. 
a woman uh, makes some joke to her, her the guy with her, and then just, he just slaps him in the balls. Yeah, nut slap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and what the best part about it was that you've got uh, you got the poker go. Just it's right in the corner of this. Um, you know, we got a picture on the screen. You gotta watch this clip. Holy moly, it's just so good. Um, it's it the was, guy just falls over. Yeah, it was slowly. I mean, any guy who's been hit just right down there knows like, okay, yeah, it's kind of a pain that doubles you over. And that seemed to be the case. She must have got it just right. And it was just the guy. I don't even know who was playing the hand, but he was thinking. So the camera was on him and this couple of their couple of friends, whatever they were in the background uh, on the other side of the rail. It was just happened to catch it perfectly. And then you had the commentators, uh, David Tuckman and Brent Hanks. That's it. Just reacting to it perfectly. So good. Yeah, And Brent uh, tweeted it out and. I saw it and I thought this is this is just a weird piece of gold from Without the WSOP. Doubt. Without a doubt, uh, I can't remember what year it was. Like, maybe it was 2019. But I saw a guy with a drink on the rail and like he, he like trips and it like, goes up in the air and you can see it perfectly, like the whole thing. Um, that was great that year. I was like, oh, it's so fun to see stuff in the rail and like. You know, but this, my goodness, <laughs> it was um, it was just funny because the guy like it's a slow reaction and like it's like the pain is working through him because he's slowly and then he starts doubling over and I think she's like oh are, are you okay and this is all playing in the background of the poker drama that's happening and now I don't know who these two people are but I have a feeling that's going to come out on social media and this is going to be what they're known for in poker now oh without doubt yeah um, I'm all for people getting known for in poker but not for this I mean it gives Never a whole again. new meaning to Never again. hitting the nuts in, <sighs> in poker lingo am I right <sighs> I hate you so much. With that, we're going to wrap this up with a nice little bow on it. Thanks a lot, Chad Holloway, for ending my with that pleasure, bullshit. My pleasure. My um, pleasure. Okay, let's go ahead and welcome. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I have been a fan of the Poker Hall of Fame for years and years. And uh, who we're bringing in, Jack McClellan, has a storied history. From the mid-80s through the late 90s, he was the, one of the two top bosses mm-hmm. for all the tournaments run at WSOP at Horseshoe. With Jim Albright by his side, these guys made things happen. That's the years that Helmuth won his bracelet, Johnny Chan, Stu Unger, lots of the legends were there, and, and these guys made those, uh, made those calls. And so let's bring in the gentleman, Jack McClellan. 